with all this debate about this big three, about Kendrick, Cole, Drake, who's the best, who's even good, I think there's only one thing that can solve this debate. Seriously though, if you know anything about these three artists, you know how loved they are. But it's honestly three completely different fan bases. And while of course there is crossover, I think it'll be really interesting to see how the data works on this one. So today, I'm going to take a look at every single one of their projects and rank them based on data. If you've seen my other two data ranking videos, you know how this works. But here's a quick rundown. First, I took a look at Music Board, Rate Your Music, and Album of the Year and took their user score ratings. Then I ranked every single one of these out of five myself. Next up, this time since we're doing albums instead of songs, I used Pitchfork. Their ratings can be kind of divisive, so I think it's an interesting twist. And finally, I used Reddit, but I tried to find the absolute worst rankings that everyone hated in the comments. So then I put them all into this spreadsheet, put it in this formula, and saw the results. Here are the ground rules though. We're doing pretty much every project except for any collab tapes. No Her Loss, no What A Time To Be Alive, no Dreamville. I also started with So Far Gone for Drake, Overly Dedicated for Kendrick, and Friday Night Lights for Cole. That left 28 projects to be ranked. Finally, one last bit of data. Did you know that almost 98% of everyone watching these videos is not subscribed? So if you like what you saw, leave a like, a comment, a subscribe, anything you got. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to these rankings. All right, these first seven projects are rated anywhere below a three. Let me be the first to say this is overhated. I don't think it's the best, and sure, it's a bit weird, boring, and not the venture I'd expect from Drake, but I'm gonna be honest, I still kinda rock with it. Pitchfork knows ball for sure. But either way, though, I do understand why it's ranked so low. Honestly, Nevermind is a baffling album. Drake can do club music, I mean, we heard Passion Fruit, but not full-on modern house. It just all felt a bit hollow, not only in content, but in emotion. However, that's kind of the weird appeal for me. It's weird seeing an artist like Drake making such a detached album, so for that I can kind of vibe with it in a vacuum. Songs like Texco Green or Massive are just such bangers it's like not even funny. Of course, Jimmy Cooks as a closer felt like when they would put the next superhero in the end credits. Definitely doesn't belong here, but it was a great track. If this list included her loss though, I could go on a whole new tangent. That's probably Drake's most solid project for me since Views. Anyways though, honestly never mind, is here at 28, we all expected it, let's move on. I mentioned in the last video that I think might delete later is probably the worst J. Cole record, and I stand by that after just over a week. It's just so boring, man. The production is lame, the flows are typical, and Cole is just not on his game here. I'm seeing a lot of love for songs like Pricey and Trey the Truth and Ibiza, and I think I'd agree. Those two along with 7 Minute Drill for me are probably the favorites on this album, but there's really not much here. Cole just needs a bit more exciting production, and I think he can do really well. I think he has some of the weakest beats in the game right now, so when he gets on good production, I think he really shines. That's why his feature game is so strong. I mean, when he gets out of this comfort zone, he can really excel. That's basically me saying I don't have too much to say about this project. It's boring, and the placement was deserved. Certified Loverboy was the solidification of Drake's current legacy. This was the Goofy Drake breakout game. Insane how many Goofy bars are just all over this thing. How big the marketing was, and yet it was still hated from the get-go. Not even Scorpion, a pretty similar album in my opinion, got this much hate. I do understand it, but now I think the love for the good tracks is finally starting to surface. Songs like Yubba's Heartbreak, Brace My Mind, or even TSU with its really weird bars are very unique. As a full project though, definitely bloated, another trademark of new Drake, but some of the individual tracks are gems. I think we brush past just how goofy that album cover is though, come on now. This is my least favorite Drake project, and honestly by a pretty good margin. I think the biggest problem here is the wasted potential with this album. Its hits were really good, but it just made you realize how phoned in and weird the rest of it is. Drake tries a lot of different things here, and only a few of them stick. 8am in Charlotte is a great song because it's so different to Drake's current sound, yet still feels authentic because it reminds us of his old sound. Meanwhile, him leaning into tracks with Working on Dying just feels a little off-putting. However, IDGAF, a full-on Benny X track, is pretty fun. But that's debatable of whether it's just because Yeet was carrying, and I don't even like Yeet. Definitely another case of an over-bloated album, though. Shout out to the Deluxe, uh, none of those tracks are really weak. 
Scorpion suffers for the same reasons as the last two Drake albums, but I don't think it's as egregious. It's really the start of the bloated, disjointed, and sometimes questionable Drake that we know today, but it's still reminiscent of all the good, just enough for it to be enjoyable. I generally say there are just as many good tracks as there are bad, so it kinda just falls down the middle for me. I don't really hate it like For All The Dogs, and I don't think it's an underrated gem like some other Drake records. The hits on here are absolute gold though. Jaded, 8 out of 10, Finesse, and of course the iconic trinity of In My Feelings, Nice For What, and Ratchet Happy Birthday. Just kidding, I of course mean God's Plan. There's no denying that those songs are sick. Another shout out though to Sandra's Rose, which a lot of Drake fans, including myself, claim to be one of his best songs in the past decade. Overall though, Scorpion probably does belong here in the grand scheme, but this is probably the point in which I'd stop calling albums bad. This one personally hurts me a little bit, because the tracks that are good on this project are some of my absolute favorite Drake tracks. However, as a whole, the track list is just a little too hit or miss for me. Let me start positive though by saying just what a vibe this track list is. Throwing me back to the awkward times of the pandemic, the track list just feels like what it was like to be a teenager at that time. Maybe it's a bit of bias, but I still go back to tracks like D4L and Pain 1993. The minimalism works really well on a good chunk of this track list. Time flies as a gem no matter how simple it is. In general, Drake feels a little more present here than he did on Scorpion. There's a bit better of an energy throughout the record. I think the length really helps the general feel of this project be a bit more positive. Instead of five track runs where you get nothing to take away, the track list almost fluctuates between good and mid. If this project was an EP of maybe six or seven tracks, this would be remarked as one of Drake's standout modern projects. However, as it stands, it's just a little too long. If Might Delete Later didn't exist, this would easily be my least favorite Cole project. Every negative thing you've ever heard about J. Cole probably comes from this album. I think when KOD dropped, it's really when the Cole haters started coming out of the woodwork, and I low-key can't blame them. It's kinda boring, it's corny, and I'm just not sure I see the appeal. I will admit though, I've probably had ATM stuck in my head since this dropped, and 1985 is probably the best on this project. But everything else is just everything I don't like about Cole. I think it should just be a little bit lower, but I know I'm a hater. Next up, these projects go from a 3 to a 3.5. Cole World is an interesting album. I feel like it's when Cole really upped the corny, but I think there's something genuine enough to kind of carry it through some of the corniness. That doesn't mean it's always a hit though, and I think at even 16 songs it still feels pretty long, but I can overlook some of the corniness on Cole World no matter how permeating it is. I still like Lights Please, I still like God's Gift, Workout is admittedly a hit. It's not my favorite Cole release at all, but I'd be lying if I said I just didn't like it at all. Overly Dedicated isn't bad, but it isn't particularly outstanding. I think it's a great start, but it definitely feels like a diet section 80. I do like the production on a lot of these tracks. Opposites Attract is a banger. Barbed Wire is a simple but great beat. And Ignorance is Bliss is unique and full of young Kendrick energy. That's the unique vibe this whole project brings, but I think it's just a bit overshadowed by Section 80's very similar vibe. I weirdly think that OD is more of a consistent project, but its highs just aren't as high and its lows are just a bit more common. Either way though, I understand the ranking, but I don't disagree that it's a little underrated. Views oh views, where do I even start? Here's where I really start disagreeing with the data. I don't care about any of the hate, views is good. I love it, I'm not afraid to admit it. It really has some of Drake's best songs of this decade, and some of his biggest sleepers. I know a lot of people didn't like the poppy R&B style he went for on this record, but I think it works really well. Surprisingly so. Feel No Ways is easily one of his best songs of the last decade. Summer's Over interlude is finally getting its flowers. Fire and Desire works so well. Redemption does also for similar reasons. The hits like Controlla, One Dance, and Hotline Bling really are good. I just understand how overplayed they were. There's a couple of snoozers on here, like I've never been a You With Me fan, Still Here feels a little flat to me, and Keep the Family Close isn't exactly the best intro he's ever had. But are these low points enough to keep views all the way down at number 19? I don't think so. I didn't even mention tracks like Hype, Grammys, or Too Good. That's just to show how good this thing is. I think Views is finally starting to be looked on with good graces by its haters, but I loved this thing since I first heard it. So Far Gone is just a bit better to me than the album most associated with it, Thank Me Later, but it's ranked below it. 
I think there's a lot higher highs, but also a bit lower lows, so it kind of balances out down here. Best I ever had is still one of Drake's better tracks though, and I really like Houston Atlanta Vegas, and Sooner Than Later is a nice R&B track. I just do think it is a bit long. Do we really need 18 tracks? If this was chopped down a little bit, I think it'd be a great introductory mixtape. Drake's evolution into Take Care in 3 years definitely has its roots here though, so it's definitely got respect for that. Care Package, in my head, is just more life's younger brother. It's trying to do the same thing, but it just doesn't have the same impact. No one cared for Scorpion as much as Views, so getting a throwaway project right after it just didn't have the same effect. But there are some really good songs on here, just more misses than hits. The two timestamp tracks are pretty good, How About Now is a hit, and I really do like Trust Issues. Also shout out to the Cole feature. The rest of the tracks though just really lack staying power, so I do think 17 is just a bit overrated, but I can respect it. Born Sinner is just way too bloated, but it's got some great songs on it. Villuminati is a fun intro, Power Trip is a hit, and same thing goes for She Knows, and I do love Forbidden Fruit. It also has Sparks Will Fly as the outro, which I think works really well, and the title track also works for kind of similar reasons. Just as I've been saying for a lot of these on the lower half, it feels too long. 21 tracks, really only half of them are anything special, and the rest feels like filler. Four of the 21 tracks are skits and interludes, which doesn't help the aimlessness of this track list. Again, cut it down, 12 songs max, and you've got yourself a pretty solid outing. More Life has Passion Fruit, end of story. Seriously though, More Life has some really amazing tracks on it, like insanely good. It's shocking just how many absolute hits came from this track list, and this was less than a year away from views, which was still pretty much in rotation in the general public. Then Drake comes through with Do Not Disturb, Fake Love, Ice Melts, Portland, Galchester, Free Smoke, and of course Passion Fruit all on the same project. Nothing's Into Somethings and Teenage Fever can also get a shout out. It just doesn't really stay consistent though, as there are some actually bad tracks like Glow or KMT, which just don't fit the vibe. Overall though, I think 15 is more than fair for this project. Thank Me Later is very solid. I don't know if I'd call any song on it bad, just not as good as others. The intro Fireworks is a great tone setter, Shut It Down is a dreamy R&B hit, and Find Your Love is another huge hit. The outro Thank Me Now is a sleeper. I think there's a lot to really like here, I just don't have a ton to say about it honestly. It's a really solid breakout for Drake, and it does everything it sets out to do. Not exactly stellar, but very very solid. The off season is a bit of a roller coaster, but I think it's got enough going for it to keep it afloat. It's a pretty tight 40 minutes, it doesn't really linger for too long, which can definitely be a problem with Cole's projects. Amari and My Life are great, the climb back has always been my favorite though. I also like a track like Hunger on the Hillside. I think the track list gets a bit sleepy in the middle though. Applying pressure and punching the clock never stood out to me. I also think I've just heard Pride is the Devil so many times that I've grown to dislike it. I think this project is a bit more loved by diehard Cole fans, but I'm not really one. I think this is about right of a ranking, maybe a bit overrated, maybe a bit underrated, but right down the middle seems like an appropriate rank. For Your Eyes Only is a great story that feels a bit inconsistent as an album. I really like a majority of the tracks here, but it gets held back from being the best by some of the lower moments, especially since it's only 10 tracks. But that's underplaying just how much I like the majority of the project. The Closer is probably one of my favorite tracks from Cole, Neighbors is awesome, Deja Vu is a classic, and Change gets slept on hard. Never been a fan of the two She's Mine tracks, but overall I think this project does a great job. Definitely some of Cole's best work. As we get into the top half, these projects are all extremely close, only ranging from 3.7 to 3.9. 2014 Forest Hills Drive not making the top 10 is actually insane. Debatably Cole's only classic, this album just has something that I can't describe. I do get the hate, honestly, I'm not the most diehard Cole fan, but even I can love this album. It's really where Cole's production, his lyricism, and his flows all really come together to create something special. It's the most nostalgic album in this entire list. There's nothing else really like it. Everyone ever can rap along to Wet Dreams no matter how goofy you think it is. No Role Models is another classic. Same with Tale of Two Cities. GOMD has great energy. And shout out to the more slept on 03 adolescents. I think the only thing really holding it down is the outro note to self. Its length just makes you really aware of how goofy it is, unlike the rest of the songs like Wet Dreams or Apparently that do their thing, do it well, and get out. Definitely underrated on this ranking, it's at least gotta be top 10. 
If to Pimp a Butterfly and Good Kid Mad City are LeBron and Curry, Section 80 is, uh, I don't know, Jimmy Butler. Sometimes this album phones it in, but when it's hot, it's on fire. Songs like ADHD are so incredibly good. Then we follow it up with two pretty average songs in No Makeup and Tammy's song. But then you get a crazy playoff run with the last five songs. Rigor Mortis down to High Power is just a crazy run. I really like what Section 80 stands for in Kendrick's discography. It's really unlike anything besides Overly Dedicated, but it's so authentic and just great. Such a good project. Friday Night Lights is really as good as the numbers say. It's the definition of a mixtape. It feels like everything a mixtape stood for back in 2010. His rapping is truly on point. This is definitely his pen at its best. I'm not saying he peaked here, but I'm just saying it is the highest ranked J. Cole album. Like I said earlier, when Cole has good production, he really shines. He can find a way to flow on every single beat on this record. SeaWorld, Vilmatic, Too Deep for the Intro, all sound so different, yet he can slide on every single one. I was definitely surprised to see it beat out Forest Hills and For Your Eyes Only, but man, I can't deny how solid of a mixtape it is. I just think it kind of has a certain ceiling to it but it stays pretty consistently high for the full thing. The fact that Kendrick's B-sides are in the top 10 really says a lot, but that's not to take away from just how good these tracks are. Spacey, jazzy, and just so catchy. All of the tracks on UU are so sick. This is something we'll probably never see again from any of these artists, so I've gotta give UU its love for just existing. There's really not a miss here when it comes to full songs. The only one I don't vibe with too much is 04. I do agree with this ranking, I think it's better than most of these projects, except maybe I'd put Forest Hills over this. Nothing Was The Same is really, really good. I think it gets overlooked nowadays just because it's Drake, but Drake fans know just how good it is. The whole thing literally feels like your head is in the clouds, looking down over the city you grew up and out of. Drake is just the perfect amount of corny here. He leans into these narcissistic lyrics to just the right amount. This is not to take how much emotion is packed into the project though. A song like From Time is tied up there with my favorite Drake song for that reason. My hottest take is that I think the lowest points on this record come from Tuscan Leather and Pound Cake. I know absolutely no one agrees with me, but I really tried to get into those tracks. I just can't. I can vibe with the catchier tracks on here though. Wu-Tang Forever, Hold On We're Going Home, and The Language. But I also really like the amount of space on this record. It sits the instrumentals and vocals at a strangely perfect distance in your ears, really unlike any other Drake project. I think the five track run from Wu-Tang Forever to Hold On We're Going Home might just be his best though. I really, really do love this record. Mr. Morale has probably been the Kendrick album I've had the rockiest relationship with, but I do really understand why it's loved. One of the most vulnerable albums by any A-list artist. So vulnerable that it really gets uncomfortable at times. The more you dig into this record, it does have a lot to say, but at the same time it's very messy. The vibe is just constantly shifting, and so much more than any other Kendrick project. Going from Father Time to Rich Spirit to We Cry Together always felt like a thematic roller coaster, especially when the second disc is so consistent in its theming. The tracks that don't have a lot to say really don't have a lot to say. At least a banger like DNA has a lot of density to it, but what's a song like Silent Hill really have to say? But that's the thing, the songs that are bangers aren't just very good thematically, and the ones that are more thematically dense just don't sound as good. Maybe that's the point, but if I'm listening to an album, sure I want to understand the poetry and artistry of it, but I also want to hear good music. That's why a song like Worldwide Steppers is so good to me. So much to say, a very weird instrumental that works so extremely well in the context of the album, and it sounds great while doing all of this. That beat switch is just immaculate too. For the most part, I really, really do get the love for this album. I just haven't had as much for it as most have. Still a good record. I pretty much go back and forth between the favorite out of the top three Drake projects, but I think this one really has the most high highs out of the three. I don't think it's wrong to call Take Care a classic, right up there with Kenny's Best. Rate Your Music Hates Drake, which is the only thing keeping it away from a four, but I think fifth best out of all these records does sound about right. So much to love about Take Care. First off, just how well it's aged. There's a lot of records from the 2008 to 2011 time span that just sound dated, especially when talking about Drake, but Take Care is not one of them. The sound of this record is just so glossy and so high class. This record is the epitome of a glass of some really good whiskey. It's got some of Drake's most emotional lows, but some of his biggest bangers. Headlines, Take Care, Lord Knows, HYFR, all hits. Then the other half is Cameras, Marvin's Room, Look What You've Done. So much to love. Not to mention that his rapping is probably at its best on Take Care. 
Songs like The Ride, where he just keeps going over that amazing production for almost six minutes. Crew Love, even though we'll never see a Drake and Abel collab again, was a moment. I'm glad I get to show my love for Drake in this video. Seriously, this is a classic. Despite all the praise I just gave to Take Care, I think right now I'm leaning this as my favorite of his projects. I think there's so much here to love. 2015 Drake was really something else. Hopping on ESPN and hearing energy so often was an unbeatable vibe. Sure, there are songs that are weaker on this mixtape, but honestly, there's not a bad track. I've shown my love for Jungle before, but it's probably my favorite Drake song. Star 67 is close behind, and there's Madonna, which gets slept on. The first five tracks are in seriously close debate for his best five track run. Legend as the intro is just perfect. Wednesday Night Interlude gives me the same energy as some of the best on views. Honestly, this is just an insane mixtape. I'm glad it reached number four, but we all know how this top three is gonna go. Damn is one of those projects that's either someone's favorite or thought to be overrated. And while I think it should just be a bit lower, I think it's also a definitely underappreciated album. Kendrick's most energetic and frantic album literally feels like the world is ending right now, which works so well with the themes. Of course, Damn is a hit parade. DNA, element, loyalty, humble, love, he really just flexes how good he is here. But we also get some extremely introspective moments like Fear, Duckworth, and Feel. If I wasn't such a big fan of jazz rap sounds on t -Pab, I would probably say that Damn has the better production over it. It's definitely a close second. A song like Pride is just so sick. The only thing for me is that I feel like there are a couple blemishes on the track list, like God and Ya. Great album though. Definitely one that needs to be in the same conversation as Good Kid Mad City and T-Pab, so I see why it's here at number 3. With a huge gap between this and the last project, Good Kid Mad City was literally an instant classic. I've been listening to this album for so long it literally feels like a part of me. You know why this record is so good. I'm not gonna bore you with how much this thing rocks. It's arguably got his best song with Sing About Me, some of his biggest hits like Don't Kill My Vibe or Poetic Justice, and its storytelling is just immaculate. His absolute smash hit, I can only pray for the day we see an artist drop an instant classic as good as this record. I really don't know if we've gotten a hip-hop album with just as much of a game-changing impact from someone since this dropped 11 years ago. So incredibly good. And at number one... Do I need to say it? No, for real though, I think we pretty much all expected this. Although I do gotta applaud Good Kid Mad City for keeping it so close, literally within seven hundredths. Same with Good Kid, I don't really feel like gushing to you about how much I love this album. I think it's absolutely fantastic, probably the best of the decade, if not one of the best in hip hop period. I definitely agree that it's the best project here, and honestly it's not even close. And I think that that reflects in the data. I don't really have any unique words to say about this album besides it's amazing. If you want to hear me gush about every single song, check out my Kendrick Ranked video if you haven't already. Overall though, definitely deserves its placement. We all knew it was coming. Give it its flowers. Hey guys, just a short little outro. Thanks for watching. This was my uh, Drake glazing video, <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed. Um, again, still plan on making a lot of videos. Uh, might slow down for a little bit soon here. It's about to be summer. It's about to be finals time. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still going to keep kicking. Thank you guys for the constant support. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.